Welcome into another quick hitter edition of the original Gangsters podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Uh, Today, I want to do a quick deep dive into a little uh, historical tidbit that traces into something that's going on today in the Colombo crime family. I love talking about that last great American mafia dynasty that is the Persico crime family. Uh, And Skinny Teddy Persico recently uh, got sentenced to go back to prison for about five years. But in that uh, paperwork, we found out that he is the boss in waiting, uh, that the crime family will be his uh, upon him getting out of prison in uh, the late 2020s. But what I want to talk about today is the fact that he ended the 1990s Colombo mob war by ordering a murder from inside his grandmother's wake. Uh, in Brooklyn about 30 years ago, almost to this week. Um, And he did it on a furlough from prison, surrounded by three state prison guards, shackled uh, from the uh, hands to his legs, and held a clandestine meeting with his crew. Uh, A handful of guys came And in front of his grandma's body, he gave the order to kill Joey Scopo, the last remaining member of that rebel faction led by little Vic Arena, who opposed Skinny Teddy's uncle, Carmine the Snake Persico, uh, in the early 90s. Between 1991 and 1993, uh, New York City was a shooting gallery. Uh, Headlines were, uh, you know, splashed across the city, uh, connected to this shooting war that erupted between Little Vic Arena, the acting boss, and Carmine the Snake Persico, who was behind bars. And at the end of the day, you had almost a dozen dead bodies. And the final body to drop was Joey Scopo's. And Teddy Persico took that murder contract very personally. He wanted his guys to be the ones to murder uh, Joey Scopo and end the war. So let's just do a quick Time travel back to August of 1993. I believe it was August 18th uh, in Diker Heights, Brooklyn at the Scarpacci Funeral Home. And Teddy Persico was away upstate serving a, a, a drug sentence. And he arranges for a furlough to come back to Brooklyn and say goodbye to his grandma. And he's ushered down, downstate, back to his home hometown stomping grounds of Brooklyn by uh, state police guards that he had to pay for. Um, And they brought him to pay his respects to his grandmother. They brought him in the back of Scarpacci's funeral home with the body for him to um, say goodbye. But when he was saying goodbye, he huddled with members of his crew, most notably his acting capo, Anthony, uh, big Anthony Russo, who eventually would turn government informant and uh, kind of fill us in on what was happening inside the funeral home on August 18th, 1993. And he was, like I said, he he had handcuffs on, uh, three guards around him, and he calls Anthony Russo and and another two people uh, close to him and whispers, you know, you got to get Joey Scopo. We got to do it. It's got to come from our crew and it's got to happen fast. Um, the word had been said, the button had been pushed, and Joey Scopo was was running on uh, borrowed time. Scopo was a guy that you know went way back uh, in the crime family through his dad, little Ralphie. He was very close with the Gottis in Queens, John Gotti, Gene Gotti, Pete Gotti. Uh, came up doing hijacks with those guys in the 70s, and eventually became the underboss of that rebel faction under Vecarina. Vecarina was jailed in 92, I believe. And his main muscle on the streets, Wild Bill Cotolo, uh, who was his kind of sergeant at arms, the general fighting fighting the war, uh, was jailed, I think, in 93. So by late 93, Joey Scopo was the last man standing. And the order was given from the funeral home. And then how it was carried out is also notable. 
uh, because they they stalked him to uh, to his home in Queens. He was coming home from uh, I believe a, a dinner where he had had a a meal with his family. He was in a car with his teenage nephew and his his son in law, and the hit team was was stationed on his block. When the car pulled up into the driveway, one of the hitmen came and sprayed it with automatic weapon fire, but everybody miraculously was uh, was not hit and survived that. Joey Scopo jumped out of the car and had a cell phone and he chucked it at a teenage hitman that was on the hit team, John Papa, uh, and chucks his phone at John Papa and kind of starts shit talking him, says, oh, you think you're some kind of tough guy? Let's see how tough you are. John Papa dodges the cell phone and then comes up uh, at point blank range and unloads his clip into Joey Scopo, murdering him and for all intents and purposes, ending that Colombo mob war. John Papa, again, as an 18 year old hitman, um, very eager to, to prove his merit, uh, was responsible for, for three or four murders in a very short period of time. He killed a number of the guys that were on that hit team with him because they were uh, bragging about the fact that they had been the ones that killed Joey Scopo when Scopo had, had been the one that pulled the trigger. Um, his, his father was a pretty legendary uh, mob guy that was murdered as well, uh, Papa Bear. John Papa went to prison uh, and is serving life right now. Teddy Persico, you know, ended up copying a plea uh, or being found guilty, rather, uh, in this murder conspiracy and had to go do uh, at least a dozen years or so, came out in 2020. And part of this plea that he just uh, agreed to in this Colombo labor racketeering case uh, could, uh, included him admitting to violating his supervised release from being released on this uh, on this case that included on a racketeering cl- racketeering case that included the Scopo murder. Uh, meeting with people in the family, kind of politicking. There's been wiretaps that have come out in court in the last couple of weeks that show people in the Columbos talking about Teddy as the future boss. Uh, saying that everything's going to be great once Teddy's in and uh, how, how Teddy is is the future. He's the future of that dynasty. As Jerry Capace says, uh, he's a dyed-in-wool, uh, true blue gangster, and um, you know it, it's his for the taking now. Jerry reported about the little Rob D'Onofrio promotion. We touch on that on another quick hitter this week. Uh, he is now the acting boss of the Columbo's Ribble, a little Rob D'Onofrio from from Brooklyn. So we'll keep you up to date with everything that's going on. But I thought I wanted to uh, give people a little insight into the way the Persico mind works and just tell you how crazy things were back in that Colombo war and, and do a little, uh, you know, throwback to, to the August 1993 murder contract that was issued at a funeral. For OG Podcast, I'm Scott Bernstein. I'll see you next time.